Hey, welcome back. I'm Dennis Eilster and this is Getting in the Game. Today is about the right wing, getting it right side up, and things we're not supposed to forget, and the fuel system, which is the gas tank, which we're going to be working on today. So stick around. One of the most important things to not forget is down here where the strut uh, is attached to it you, from the other side you can't get at these two rivets down here so it's got to be done from the inside so we're going to get that done in a minute well i got to thank steve for this light a buddy of mine gave me that and if any of you are looking at or wanting a cool tool this 20 volt i'm not being sponsored by them or anything but the dewalt if you need a light that thing is unbelievable i just used it camping and we were surprised. Man, let's see the cobwebs on here. That's how long I've been gone. See, I went camping for three weeks. And I can't, I bet you can't guess where I went. All right, now I've really shaved this one down. Let's see, there, maybe you can see it better. Um, I even took, because it's all steel, it's not aluminum. Uh, a lot of these are aluminum. Um, I was able to grind this off and trim this down and this down and still have all the support I needed. But it really lets you get up flush on these. If you can get them in. There she goes. I better get up on something. I would have loved to have been able to get down in here with the air ratchet or the air riveter, I wasn't able to. Okay, I'm gonna double check. Flush. Take a piece of dowel, wrap some tape on it or whatever, and put a, a nice pad on the back. These work really nice for putting in stubborn rivets. There. Now it's in. All right, onward and upward. After the close of the video, I usually put a little picture in there or something fun, but today there's going to be bonus footage. Okay, now the fuel tank. This is my method of testing. Uh, every time I do something, I retest it, but now it passed the test overnight and it, test, it tested out with the soap all yesterday. I had to take a little piece of wood and tap this down around this ridge right here just to lower the angle of the cap because it wasn't fitting the skin right. But after a lot of fittings, it is really good now. The other thing I had to do was this was unexpected, the height of that. By the time we got done, I'll show you what I... I corked it up so this one when it, this one when it sat in there it really needed to go forward and so we had to take quite a bit out of this hole the same as what happened to the other wing but this one I elongated and sanded uh, so when I removed the tank that one I had to do while the tank that one over there I had to do while the tank was in it was all done when we flipped it over so a little word to the wise is when you're fitting it and it all looks good, then look underneath with a, with a mirror and see just how, how the holes are sitting because you're going to have to modify them if they're touching. And what you'll do is uh, have a real tough time once it's all riveted up. So double check your hole alignments on the bottom and pull the tank out and, and put that back in and out. Mine are fitting really good now. I've got the cork where I want it. And they're probably all a little different in how you're going to do it. But this is how it's going to set the most. This is the most important to me. The top will, um, I, unless I roll the plane over, which someday I hope I will, but I doubt if I will. Somebody else might. So, uh, yeah, it's more important how it sits in here all the time. Um, I think they have them quite loose from the instructions. I have mine fairly snug touches here really good and here good 
but I had double up over here, single up over here, and I put one all the way across the back here where it sits the most. This will be for expansion when the bottom, because it sits quite high off because of this angle here. It sits quite high off by the time it comes over here. And this will be for when it the tank settles down. So let's put that in a minute. Oh, real quick. I just put a nipple on there with a piece of hose and blow air in and have that clamp on there ready to go with it very loose, but ready to go. And as I blow up the glove, I just snap that shut and then test the ends here with soap to make sure it isn't leaking. And that seems to work really good. It's not, don't have any valves, nothing fancy. Uh, as I've said in the past, the best thing is the most simple thing to me. Something quick and easy and you're done. I will demonstrate how I do it. Let's get the hose around here. A bit long. That on there, snapped it on. You could probably just use a pair of vice grips. I just happened to have these for radiator hoses when I was working on cars. And uh, a little bit of little bit of dish soap. Check the end. See that you get a bubble all the way across. And check these fittings. And now you can go and check everything. If it was excessive pressure, the glove would blow right off. Super simple little tool when the fit is down in the notches to getting this off. And now a lot of cleaning. I want to get all the soap residue off and any sealant that I used. There, happy with that. All right, time to get all the soap off. The next thing I'm gonna to have to do is get these out, clean those holes. This is for the return line. All right, this one, I'm gonna leave my, uh, this is a vent tube that goes all the way up to here that vents out the bottom. Some guys angle that I see and have that forced air, but um, if you vent out the cap, Less chance of uh, fuel coming out when you lean the plane from what I've heard. And so I'm gonna, I put threads on that, cap this, if you haven't seen that on the other videos. Um, once you thread the outside of this, um, you can get a cap at your local hardware store that threads on there. And then I put some of the regular sealant for uh, the fuel tanks on it and screwed it on there. In the future, I could unscrew that if I had to. But for now, she's sealed up. I've already test fit this with the nipple off and it will go into the wing. So that is, that is the uh, screen in there and that is done and sealed. Really important to seal this up because the screen's on that side. I don't have a plug. I thought I had a plug that size. I'll be able to reach in there and pull that off, I hope. No, that's awful hard. Let me cut one. <laughs> I heard that. Um, let me measure one out to size. How's that? And maybe it'll be easier to take off. Maybe I'll grab one of the four corners. Yeah, that's better. That'll seal it up. I grab that, pull that off, and screw the uh, fitting on to receive the fuel line. Now I gotta just clean that thing all down, get the soap off. Everything. Another thing on prepping the gas tank is I bent this out. I, I supported it with a uh, very thin, like needle nose pliers down in there. Bent this tab out so I have clearance enough for a rivet in behind. That doesn't leak Quick and recap. it is ready to rock and roll. I taped this off and I believe in doing the whole thing. I don't want to do it all nice and pretty. I want it coating the whole thing. And another thing I did is the positive uh, connector here. 
taped that up and I packed that in all the way around that after it was clean and dry because that penetrates down through that piece of plastic. Anyway, if that was to leak, that would uh, be one of the main places in this plastic. And then, of course, we go all the way around the plastic, all the way around it and inside of it, and then pull the tape off and the connector slides right on. Just don't try not to get too much underneath it if you decide to do that. Because you gotta add room for the connector and the and the um, insulator. All right, it's all clean and dry. Uh, let's stick it in. And I'll show you the next step I'm gonna do. When I was fitting the skin over the top of the tank, once the tank was exactly where I wanted it, there was a little tension right here uh, on the panel for where the uh, ground goes off the sensor. There, I cut a groove in this with a die grinder, flipped this over and lined that up right on the direction where I wrote it and took my, my elf hammer and tapped that down and made a nice little groove in that and later um, now it clears it just fine. Later, when I put a cap on here, the flange will go out past that, and I'll just grind out the underside of that flange enough. Um, if it's plastic that I'm using, something thicker, uh, and it should hide that just fine. But that was necessary on this side. Now that's fit in, and this, when you draw it down, you can see, because that's going to be right on the bottom, that top lip, I can see how it's fitting. This is fitting really nicely now. Um, I'll show you a close-up of why I did that. As you can see, that, that was sitting up there. With this pulled right down tight, it's not near it. Even when you flex it a long ways, it doesn't touch. So I'm sad to have to have done that, but... I couldn't see any other fix unless I was going to make a much bigger hole, and I don't want to do that. So the next thing is to um, fit this in the back that holds the tank forward, which that goes right here. you got to figure out where to put it. Everyone's a little different, so they don't give you any holes. Your tank might be for, further forward than mine or a little bit further back, so you've got to custom fit that. Okay, I decided to upsize because the edge distance was so low on this one. Um, and the cork doesn't get covered all by the metal. So I went down just a little further. Cork is completely supported now. And I got a little more edge distance for this one up here. I've already started marking it out. And now I've got to drill my first hole. Got the first hole drilled and denibbed. Now, how do I locate the other drill, the other holes? Good question. Here's my 20. I like that. We've always decided perfect's good enough. Next thing I want to do is my ground strap. 
This time I'm going to put it in the same position, but I'm only going to put a rivet in it. Yeah, I had a ground stud built in the other one, and I think that might have been a little overkill. So let's make ground strap. If you're going to put shrink wrap on, now's the time. How many times have you guys forgot to put shrink wrap on something? I never have forgot. Never. Beautiful. I'm going to put it out more to one end than the other because of this here. Cool. Well, we're not going to install this right now because we've got to drill the center spar out completely. But we got the tank on the run. I've got a Got to take a couple measurements over here and drill a hole where the return line comes in. But the tank is sitting in there pretty. Got our bracket built. Going to put a couple uh, pieces on here to support the top if we ever go upside down. And so that that'll pretty much do it for today. Hey, thanks for coming along. I really appreciate it. I also want to thank everybody for subscribing. I got over a thousand now while I was on vacation. It went over a thousand. From help from some of my nieces and nephews and uh, that was fun and great so I hope uh, it just makes me appreciate it so much that I just want to hopefully do a better job better job and so thanks for coming along we'll see you in the next one this is not in the plans but I've had a lot of confusion about this bracket and how it hooks to the end here. If it goes above it or below it, and it has to be removed off of both spars. They have to be removed to, to get this put in. When you get your kit, you'll see what I mean. But this end, you wonder what to do with it also. Well, the way I cut mine so that it clears this piece, I wanted this front rib flush to that piece and not over the top of this. So I cut that back. And then and you realize that you're kind of, and you're not weakening it, but I just, I just decided I was going to make a bracket that stepped down slightly and goes on the factory holes and through the factory bolt. Because uh, I checked out the, uh, the depth of the bolt and it passes that. So I'm not hurting my bracket in any way. But anyway, that's my bonus footage. I made a little bracket to help support this end from wanting to move forward and aft. Or out and in. And another thing, um, if you have the time, please comment on that bracket. If you like it, you hate it, anything in between. But that way I'll know you made it to the end, and I will really appreciate the input.